Ever noticed how some people seem to have two different personalities in public and at home? Well, today we're diving into that world, focusing on the life of a narcissistic wife. Sure, she's all charm and smiles outside, but once the door closes, it's a whole different story. We're going to walk through this journey, uncovering why this happens and how it shakes up a relationship. And hey, stick around till the end because I've got a neat bonus tip just for you. So, ready to get into it? Let's dive right in. 1. The Charismatic Public Persona So, first up, let's talk about how a narcissistic wife shines like a star when she's out and about. You know the type, right? Always the life of the party, making everyone laugh. And somehow, she just draws people in. It's like she's got this magnetism that's hard to ignore. But here's the thing, she's not just being sociable. There's a bit more going on under the hood. For starters, it's all about the image. She's got this knack for knowing what people want to see and hear. It's like she's playing a part in a play, one where she's always the hero or the star. And boy, does she play it well. She's got compliments flying left and right, stories that'll make you laugh till your sides hurt, and an aura that just screams confidence. But why all the effort, you might wonder? Well, it boils down to craving that spotlight, that buzz you get from being adored and admired. She doesn't just want to be liked, but has to be the center of attention, the one everyone talks about even when the party's over. Now, don't get me wrong. Being charismatic isn't a bad thing. Heck, we all like to be liked. But when it's driven by a need for constant admiration, to always be on top, that's where it gets tricky. It's like a mask, a really convincing one, that hides what's really going on inside. 2. Behind Closed Doors The Shift in Behavior Now, let's take a peek at what happens when the party's over, and it's just her and her close ones. It's like night and day. The charm, it dims, the smiles, they're not as bright. And that warm, inviting aura, it kind of slips away. It's a whole different ball game when the audience isn't around to watch. At home, things can get pretty tense. That need for admiration doesn't just vanish. Instead, it turns into something more demanding, more intense. It's like she's still performing, but the role has changed. Now, it's less about making everyone laugh and more about making sure she's still in control, still the one calling the shots. And if things don't go her way, well, that's when the storm clouds roll in. Arguments might spark from the smallest things, and it often feels like walking on eggshells. You're trying to figure out the right thing to say, the right way to act, but it feels like the goalposts are always moving. It's exhausting, and frankly, it can be pretty lonely. This shift is confusing. It makes you wonder, which version is the real her? Is it the life of the party or the storm behind closed doors? It's this Jekyll and Hyde situation that can really throw you for a loop. But understanding this switch is key to getting the full picture, to really grasping what life with a narcissistic wife is like. 3. The role of empathy in the mix. All right, let's chat about empathy, or actually, the lack of it. You see, when someone's all about that narcissistic life, they often miss the key ingredient in healthy relationships of putting themselves in someone else's shoes. It's a bit like having a conversation where you're the only one talking. You're sharing, opening up, but the person across from you? They're just waiting for their turn to speak again. In public, this might not be super obvious. She might nod, smile, and throw in a wow or really to keep the conversation rolling, but it's surface level, kind of like skimming a book instead of reading deep into the story. At home, though, it's a different story. That lack of real, deep empathy starts to show. It's not just that she's not listening. It's that she doesn't get why you're upset or why something matters to you. And trying to explain it? It can feel like talking to a brick wall. This can make real heart-to-heart -heart conversations tough. You want to share, to connect on something that's bothering you or something you're excited about. But if the empathy is not there, it's like your words just bounce off. And that can leave you feeling pretty alone, even when she's right there with you. Getting why empathy, or the lack of it, plays such a big role helps us understand the ups and downs of being with someone who's all about themselves. It's a key piece of the puzzle especially if we want to understand why things are one way in public and another at home. If this chat's hitting close to home, why not share your thoughts? Drop a like or a comment below. Your story could shed light for someone else in the same boat. And if you haven't already, hitting subscribe helps us keep these conversations going. You're not alone in this. Let's navigate it together. 4. Seeing it from the other side. Now, let's think about what it's like for the person on the other end of this whole deal. Imagine being super close to someone who's like a social superstar outside, but turns into a totally different person once you're alone. It's like being in a relationship with two different people. And man, that can be a wild ride. When you're out with friends or at a party, 
you see this vibrant, outgoing version of her that everyone seems to love. But at home, when the door closes and the crowd's gone, the atmosphere changes. It's like the warmth and light just kind of fade out. And if you're the partner in this scenario, it can leave you feeling pretty confused and isolated. You might start asking yourself which version is the real her and where do you fit into all of this? This constant back and forth can be really draining. It's tough when you feel like you're always trying to keep up with the changes, never really sure what to expect next. It's not just about dealing with mood swings, but also trying to understand and connect with someone who seems to be on a totally different wavelength behind closed doors. And let's be real, everyone needs stability and genuine connection in their lives, especially from their significant other. So when that's missing, it can really throw you for a loop, making you feel like you're on this emotional roller coaster that just doesn't stop. It's a lot to handle, and it really makes you think about the impact this kind of relationship can have on a person's well-being. 5. Finding your footing. So, you're in this tricky situation, right? Living with these two different sides of someone you care about. It's like being on a boat that's rocking too much, and you're trying to find your balance. What do you do? How do you handle it? Well, let's talk about finding your footing in all of this. First things first, setting boundaries is key. Then there's the whole thing about support. Whether it's a friend, a family member, or even a professional, having that go-to person can make a world of difference. And let's not forget about self-care. It's so easy to get caught up in trying to fix everything, to make everything okay for the other person. But what about you? Taking time for yourself, doing things that make you happy, and keeping your tank full is super important. Navigating through this isn't easy, and it's not something you have to do alone. 6. Embracing your journey. Now, let's shift focus a bit and talk about you. Yeah, you. Being in a relationship with someone who's like a chameleon, changing colors depending on where she is, can make you feel like you're losing a bit of yourself. But here's the thing. It's also an opportunity. An opportunity for what, you ask? For personal growth and self-discovery. Think about it. When you're constantly adapting to your wife's moods and needs, it's easy to forget about your own dreams, passions, and what makes you tick. But it's crucial to remember that your journey matters too. It's about rediscovering what lights you up, what gets you out of bed in the morning with a smile on your face. Starting this journey can be as simple as picking up an old hobby you've let slide or trying something new that's always piqued your interest. It's about making space for yourself, your interests, and your well-being. And as you start to fill your life with these bits of joy, you'll notice something amazing. You'll start to feel more like yourself again, more grounded and confident in who you are and what you stand for. This path of self-discovery doesn't just make you stronger. It also brings a new depth to your relationships. When you're fulfilled and happy in your own skin, it changes the way you connect with others. It's like you're bringing your whole self to the table, not just the bits and pieces that you think someone else wants to see. Bonus tip. All right. Before we wrap this up, I've got a little something extra for you. It's about catching those early signs, the little red flags that might flutter in the breeze way before the storm hits. Now, I'm not saying you should turn into some sort of detective, but a bit of awareness goes a long way. When you're getting to know someone, keep an eye out for how they treat others around them, especially in situations where they're not the center of attention. Do they listen, really listen, or are they just waiting for their turn to talk? And when they talk about past relationships or conflicts, is it always the other person's fault? These little clues can give you a heads up on what might be coming down the road. You're not judging, but understanding what you're stepping into. Being aware helps you make choices that are right for you, choices that lead to healthy, balanced relationships. So keep those eyes open and trust your gut. After all, it's your journey, and you're the one in the driver's seat. Ready to learn more? Discover the common lies told by a narcissistic wife or learn how she sabotages your relationships with others. Understanding these dynamics is the first step on the path to both a healthier relationship and better emotional well-being.